the you try it from section 8.2 the first one here and it's uh, taking a look at how conditionals work all right so let's go through it. it's we're gonna do the first uh, conditional one um, so I've got that open right here so let's take a look in uh, step one we'll step you through a formal proof of if a then c from the premise if a or b then c all right so we've opened up uh, conditional one here Notice the premise right here and the goal. All right, and it says add a step to the proof and write in the goal sentence. Never a bad idea to do. So we're just going to copy that right there. We're going to go back up here. We're going to add a step and paste it right there. Okay, then it says start a subproof before the goal sentence if A then C. Enter A is the assumption of the subproof. All right, why is it asking us to do that? Well, because this is saying. First, if A or B, then we get C, all right? And then we want to prove this. All right, so let's start the subproof. Now we do proof, new subproof. So this is already saying if something, then something. All right, that's the way conditionals work. If this, then that. And then subproof works the same way. If this, and then we'll see what we can get after that. All right, so it says start a subproof for the goal sentence. Enter A is the assumption. So right now we're saying if A, All right? Okay, add a second step to the subproof and enter C. Okay, so we're gonna add C to this. All right, and this says move the slider to the step containing the goal sentence right here. Justify this step using the rule conditional intro, okay? We're going to cite those, right? It says citing the subproof. It's our subproof right now. And it wants us to use the conditional intro rule. So let's check it. Notice we don't even have a rule cited here, right? This is the, this is the subproof right here. Remember it's saying if A, then C. And that's what we get right here. If A, then C. That's why we're doing this. Now, step five, now we need to go back and fill in the subproof. Add a step between the two steps of the subproof, right? Enter A or B. All right, so let's go back up here. We're going to add a step. This is number three right here. So A or B. And we can do this using or introduction. Because remember, or introduction is uh, whatever you have, you can add or and then anything you want. And we want A or B, because that's up here. All right, so our rule again is or introduction, right, right there. And we're gonna cite that. Let's just check out this step, make sure it's good. Yeah, it is. And let's see, move the slider to the last step of the subproof. Remember, this is the subproof right here, if A, let's see. Justify the step using the rule conditional elimination. Okay, so how do we get C? Well, we use the rule, conditional elimination. It says citing the premise and the step you just proved, right? So A or B, if A or B, then C. And we have A or B, so if that, then that. We have this, so that. Now, let's see if everything checks out. And it does. And that should give you some idea of how these kinds of proofs work and the subproof works.